Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. The weather in Montreal is getting better and better. It seems we will not have any heat waves here before next summer. So, the current season is great for practice. By the way, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. So, please post your questions in the comment section or on the Ask Dao Yi channel in the Dao Yi Discord, or email me if you prefer to remain anonymous. The past couple of videos talked about Chang Nai Zhou's work in the context of Tai Chi and Xing Yi. Links are in the description. This week's video will do the same for Ba Gua. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Qi Fu Gong Cha. In last week's video, I introduced Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha or High Mountain Cloud and Mist Tea, a category of tea that grows in a cloudy and misty area, normally on a high mountain. These unique growing conditions impart a unique flavor to the green tea making it even more delicious than other green teas. If you would like to know about the impact of a temperature and a cloudy and a misty environment on the tea flavor, please watch last week's video. Link is in the description. This week's tea, Qi Fu Gong Cha, grows mostly in the same environment. First, let's talk about the name Qi Fu Gong Cha. Qi Fu means seven Buddha. The name of a county in Sichuan province, since there are seven mountains shaped like seven sleeping Buddhas. Gong Cha means the tea supplied to the royal court. Qi Fu area has had a long tea growing history. Some stories say that in the Tang Dynasty, Wu Zetian, the only female emperor in Chinese history who lived from 624 to 705, created a tea farm in the Qi Fu area in order to supply tea to the royal court. So, tea manufacturers in this area use the term Gong Cha as a marketing term to indicate its significance in the royal court. The name Qi Fu Gong Cha has a history worth more than a thousand years. But in terms of a processing method, the Qi Fu Gong Cha available today, just like any other claimed Gong Cha, is very different from the one in history. Qi Fu Gong Cha was available only in cake form during the Tang and the Song dynasties. No loose leaf tea existed back then. This is why I reluctantly called the tea produced in the Qi Fu area Qi Fu Gong Cha, even though it now uses a different processing method. Marketing gimmicks aside, Qi Fu Gong Cha is in fact a great tea. First of all, it is a green tea growing on a high mountain in a cloudy and misty environment. It also has the perfect balance of tea polyphenols and tea amino acids. So, this tea is not only healthy but also flavorful. By the way, the Sichuan area is home to many great teas. Unfortunately, Tea manufacturers in this area do not as actively promote their products as those in Fujian, Guangdong, and many other regions. As a result, many great teas produced in this region have not been so popular in the last few decades. Good quality Qi Fu Gong Cha has orchid or chestnut flavor. Qi Fu Gong Cha is best brewed with water at 
85 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds, with 10 extra seconds for each subsequent brew. I have a small box of Qi Fu Gong Cha with earlier contained two small bags, in which I have only consumed one so far with friends since this tea is not cheap. This tea has aged a lot, which is usually not good for green tea. However, this tea is one of the exceptions. The taste and the color of this tea are still very good. This is the shape of the tea leaf. A very nice flat shaped tea leaf, a typical sign of a high end green tea. Good quality tea can last longer when stored correctly. This is the color of the tea decoction. Do let me know your experience, if any, with Qi Fu Gong Cha in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic. Topic covered in today's video include first, life and the work of Chang Nai Zhou continued. Second, Gang Rou and Ba Gua. Third, application of Gang Rou in Ba Gua. Fourth, principle of Gang Rou in Ba Gua. Fifth, misperception. Sixth, demonstration. Seventh, correction of a student's practice. And last, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. Life and the works of Chang Nai Zhou continued. I have already outlined Chang Nai Zhou and his contributions in the last couple of videos. I highly recommend you watch them first to get a better understanding of Chang Nai Zhou and his great martial art training book, Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, or Chang Family Martial Training Manual. In today's video, I'd like to clarify some mistaken information about him. In 1997, the Guojia Tivei Wushu Yuan, or National Martial Art Research Institute of China, the official institute in China administrating martial art research and development under the Sports Ministry of China, published a famous martial art document. That book contained a sentence, Chang Nai Zhou Chu Xue Yu Yu Xiang, or Chang Nai Zhou first studied with Yu Xiang. In its introduction to martial art history in the Qing Dynasty period. However, the original Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu document contains no such words at all. Also, the term Yu Xiang very easily misled most people into believing that Chang Nai Zhou learned from Wu Yuxiang, the famous Wu Hao style Tai Chi founder in the Qing Dynasty. Chang Nai Zhou passed away before the birth of Wu Yuxiang. If people perceived Yu Xiang to be Wu Yuxiang, that would be nothing but a misperception. So, who were Chang Nai Zhou's teachers? As mentioned in my first video about him, his main teacher was Yan Sheng Dao. Now, what did Yan Sheng Dao practice? Well, many people believe that Yan Sheng Dao studied Shaolin. Some people believe that Yan Sheng Dao practiced Xing Yi. Well, back then, Xing Yi, as we know it today, didn't even exist. At the max, it's believable that Yan Sheng Dao practiced Xin Yi without a G, the predecessor art of Xing Yi with a G. So, from Chang Nai Zhou's writing, we can say that he must have learned many different styles 
and eventually integrated them into his own practice, which became a theoretical reference for other styles down the line. It is very hard to believe that an author of an outstanding martial art document with a profound impact on later generations of practitioners only learned from one or two teachers. Actually, if you read his text, he said that he learned many styles without mentioning any specific names, which is evidence of his studying multiple styles back then. Speaking from personal observation, great practitioners normally follow many teachers at different times regardless if they mention their names or not. While English translations of his book may exist already, I have to say that it is not so easy to translate that book into English without a prior deep understanding of martial art practice. Terms used in all the documents cannot be simply literally translated into English or modern Chinese language. They need detailed explanations and interpretations based on training experience, feeling which the majority of the information would get lost in translation. Unfortunate but true. Right now, I'm not ready to translate it because of schedule constraints, not because of language constraints. A great figure in martial art history deserves a lot more attention. Again, please watch those two videos uploaded in the last two weeks about Chang Nai Zhou's work, if not really. So, how does the Gang Rou concept mentioned in Chang Nai Zhou's book relate to Ba Gua practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Gang Rou and Ba Gua. Bear in mind that so far, I have only introduced one proverb from his book, Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian, totaling six Chinese characters, along with some related contents from his book in the past couple of videos. In today's video, I will follow the same template. So, what are the unique characteristics of Ba Gua practice in terms of Gang Rou? Let me explain. First of all, while Ba Gua is a standalone and self-sufficient training system, technically speaking, many aspects of its practice are traditionally considered to be a combination of Tai Chi and Xing Yi. As the popular old Ba Gua saying goes, quote, Dong Zuo Xing Yi, Jin Li Tai Ji, Jiao Cai Ba Gua. Translation the movement is like Xing Yi, the power is like Tai Chi, and the stepping follows Ba Gua. In a prior video, I also have explained that the terms Xing Yi and Tai Chi in the proverb can have two meanings. Regardless, both versions are similar. In Ba Gua practice, Rou Jin or flexible and relaxed power should be practiced from the get-go, compared to Xing Yi. Furthermore, the constant walking as the main practice approach of Ba Gua makes it a much more dynamic style compared to Tai Chi. So, the combination of requirements including both Rou practice and the constant dynamic walking as its stepping method makes Ba Gua a difficult style to master. In other words, a practitioner has to handle Gang and Rou very well in order to reach an advanced level. A unique style with a unique approach to practice actually makes the mastery of this style challenging. Second, some styles of Ba Gua, for example, Cheng style Ba Gua, 
require multiple circular movements to occur simultaneously. The torso, limbs, and stepping pattern constantly make different types of circular or circulating like movements, which requires a practitioner to not only handle gong and roll dynamically, but also prioritize the power in a movement that already has both gong and roll. For example, one body part may be in a gong state while others are in a roll state. At first glance, this may seem like a violation of Chang Nai Zhou's concept, but in reality, it is just a higher level of handling gong and roll. Bagua practice focuses on energy transfer, not energy itself. And according to Chang Nai Zhou, there is neither absolute gong nor absolute rou. Oh, so gong and rou are two relevant terms that should be applied in practice dynamically, not mechanically. I will explain further in the next topic. For now, let's look further into the unique characteristics of Bagua practice. Another unique characteristic of Bagua practice is that Bagua practitioners should pay attention to the separation of different movements in terms of speed, angle, direction, and also types of power. That is the way to achieve the advanced Bagua level of Dong Ru You Long, or moving like a swimming dragon. It is, indeed, the separation of the movements of the different body parts, especially the energy manifestation of each part, that elevates your practice. I have briefly talked about this part, and I have to say this is a rare practice nowadays in the Bagua community, including both in China and the West thus requiring more effort and attention from the community. Dong Ru You Long, or moving like a swimming dragon, is a higher level of handling Gang and Rou energy in practice. In other words, Gang Rou Xiang Ji, or integration of Gang and Rou, is another term mentioned in Chan Nai Zhou's book. I'd like to point out that mentions of Gang and Rou are not limited to Chang Nai Zhou's book and can actually be found in many other ancient martial art training manuals. However, in terms of the quality of practical guidance on Gang and Rou, no other book reaches the level of Chang Nai Zhou's book. Among its contemporaries, this book contains the most systematic and detailed instructions. This is one of the reasons why the Chang family martial training manual is so outstanding in its time. So, how should you apply Chang Nai Zhou's concept in Bagua practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Application of Gang Rou in Bagua before going any further, let's review what Chang Nai Zhou said about energy transfer. Rou guo qi, gang luo dian, or when transferring energy, it should be flexible and relaxed, while the structure and the power should be solid and strong when reaching the striking point. In the chapter titled Gang Rou Xiang Ji Lun, or Discussion of Integration of Gang and Rou, in the second volume of his book, Chang Nai Zhou made a much more profound and insightful statement about Gang Rou practice. Quote, Chun Yong Gang Fa, Zhe Qi Bu Man Shen, Qian Che Bli, 
，落点必不勇猛；纯柔柔法，则气散不惧，无有归着，落点亦不坚硬。应刚而柔，则气聚不不惧；应柔而刚，则气散不散，皆不得相继之妙。故善用刚柔者，如蜻蜓点水，一沾即齐，如气。过气如风轮，旋转滚走不停。必如是，则刚柔得宜，方能无气欠不实，色质不利之患。End quote. <coughs> Literal translation: If you only use the absolute or pure gang method, the energy constrains the whole body. And those constraints make the movement less smooth, so that the striking or dropping point won't be strong and powerful. If you only use the absolute or pure row method, then the energy is scattered without being concentrated. The energy will not reach its target. As a result, the striking or dropping point. Cannot be solid and strong. If it is rou, but it should be gang, then energy is not concentrated, even though it is gathered. If it is gang, but it should be rou, then the energy is not distributed, even though it is scattered. Those are the practices. Without reaching the subtle integration of gang and rou, therefore, for those who are good at handling gang and rou, energy changing is just like a dragonfly touching the surface of a lake. It just touches it and then leaves immediately. Also. The energy transfer is just like the wind wheel that rotates and turns ceaselessly. If you reach this, then it is the correct handling of gang and rou without the mistakes of lacking solid energy and being blocked without smoothness. End literal translation. Dynamic translation: Absolute gang or pure gang would. Constrain the energy within the body, making the movements less smooth, thus causing the movements at the striking point to lack strength and power. Absolute rou or pure rou will scatter your energy, keeping it from reaching its target, and also making the movement lack strength and solidity at the striking point. If there is a rou, one there in fact should be gang. The energy will not be concentrated even though it is gathered. Likewise, if there is a gang, one there in fact should be rou. The energy will not be distributed but only scattered. Those are the undesirable outcomes of not precisely the subtle integration of gang and rou. Therefore. Practitioners good at handling gang and rou are able to subtly change energy akin to a dragonfly subtly touching the surface of a lake. Also, the energy transfer is akin to a wind wheel rotating ceaselessly. Achieving this stage means you are able to handle gang and rou correctly. And your practice will no longer be deficient in solid energy, and your energy movement and transfer will also be devoid of blockage. End dynamic translation. So, Chang Nai Zhou, in his writing about Gang Rou practice, criticized the two mistakes, which include absolute or pure Gang and absolute or pure. Rou. In other words, gang and rou should be integrated together. Also, there is gang in rou, and likewise, there is rou in gang. Also, gang power should be applied 
at discrete moments where raw power should be applied continuously without pausing. I recommend revisiting this part a few times as it may be hard to digest in the first go. Recall what I said in Topic 2 of this video. To reach the level of Dong Ru You Long or moving like a swimming dragon, Gang and Rou should coexist in Bagua practice. This is a much more advanced approach to the internal styles, and Chang Nai Zhou's Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian perfectly expresses this concept in practice. Also, recall my suggestion from earlier in this video. To reach Gang Rou Xiang Ji in Bagua, the practitioner should separate a unified movement into small motions and apply Gang and Rou to each of them. Of course, easier said than done. It takes time, effort, and patience. I hope you will give it a try when you are ready. The internal styles requires a different approach to dealing with details in practice. More importantly, you first have to know what those details are before you can work on them. Without the right target, you cannot reach the destination. The accumulation of targets is the prerequisite of the destination. Now, let's look at an important principle of Gang Rou practice in Bagua in the next topic. Topic 4 Principle of Gang Rou in Bagua. In today's video, I'd like to introduce one important principle among many. Many years ago, I created a proverb to describe Bagua practice regarding its movements in relation to Gang Rou power. It is Jin Chu Gang Zai Zhang, Jin Shou Gang Zai Shen. Jin means energy, Chu means to move outward, Zai means at, Zhang means palm, Shou, Shou means to move inward, and Shen means body. Put together, it means that when you send the energy outward, the gun power is in the hand. When you retrieve the energy inward, the gun power is concentrated in the body. After observing my students practice Bagua, I noticed that many of them had a hard time differentiating between the nature of the powers applied between moving inward and outward. This proverb emphasizes that when striking out, the hand should be solid well, the body can be in a comparatively relaxed state in Bagua circular stepping, or else stiffness will occur and the power would not be able to be injected into the hand. However, when applying an inward pulling or leading energy, the body should be in the concentrated gang state while the hand or the arm is in a comparatively row state. The dynamic changing of a gang and the row state between the hand and the body in two opposite energy movements reflects the usefulness of this proverb. This principle can be applied in the Tai Chi push hands as well. Furthermore, let me re-emphasize that Gang energy should only be applied as discrete moments instead of continuously, as Chang Nai Zhou explained in his book. Feeling this, stiffness will definitely occur. So, the principle used to express the Gang Rou practice in Bagua emphasizes a few factors timing, different body parts, and the direction of energy movement, among other factors. 
Do not ignore this principle in your Bagua practice. Now, let's debunk a common misperception about Gang Rou in Bagua. Topic 5 Misperception of Gang Rou in Bagua. Topic 5 Misperception of Gang Rou in Bagua. Just like I mentioned in last week's video that since Chang Nai Zhou's book is not that well known, there is no directly obvious misperception about his writing, especially in the context of Bagua practice. However, given the influence of his writing on many Chinese martial practices, including Bagua, misperceptions of Gang Rou by Bagua practitioners are likely to happen. Some people believe that in Bagua circle walking practice, the hand and the foot should begin and end movement at the same time. That is a misperception. Let's debunk. By the way, I have debunked a similar misperception already in some prior Xingyi videos. Actually, debunking this is even more important in Bagua practice since this misperception is much more prevalent in the Bagua community compared to Xing Yi. The internal styles contains a proverb, Shou jiao qi dao, or hand and foot arrive at the same time. Bear in mind, this popular proverb does not mean that the hand and the foot finish executing a physical movement at the exactly same time. In fact, this proverb means that the energies generated by the hand and the foot movements should be in unison. It also depends on which body part will make contact with your opponents during a strike. As I mentioned earlier, the striking area should be solid and strong while other body parts should maintain a dynamic and flexible state since Bagua involves applying martial techniques while constantly walking, or else stiffness will definitely happen. So, if we recall what Chang Mai Zhou told us in his writing, also mentioned in the third topic in today's video, you will understand why the belief of both hand and foot movement beginning and ending at the same time is incorrect. Do not forget to differentiate between the timing of a Gang and Rou and Gang Rou itself in a dynamic state. Now, let's look at the relevant Bagua demonstration in the next topic. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Bagua exercise. This is one of the six four palm practices of a Cheng style. In this movement, I emphasize the separation of movements for handling its energy, as mentioned in the second topic in today's video. Ok, let me demonstrate one of the movements but with the slow motion first. Now, fast motion. <sighs> Topic 7 Correction of a Student's Practice. Okay, now let my students demonstrate one of the Bagua movements, then I correct his uh, practice. Okay, so let's thank you, let's correct this. So the first movement, 
you just do the movement, so extend the chest, one, then two, continue, then body turn more, the foot turn light, three, then four, then, then continue, five, extend, scoot, then continue, one, two, make sure the, the palm like move slower, a little bit than the step, yes, one, Two, three, then four, then next move. Pretty good, thank you. Topic eight, take a waist. First, Chang Nai Zhou contributed his entire life to improving and developing his martial arts training system based on what he had learned from multiple teachers. Second, Bagua is the stand-alone style but can be technically considered to be a combination of Xing Yi and Tai Chi. Bagua emphasizes dynamic handling of the Gang and the Rou aspects in its practice. Advanced practice such as moving like a swimming dragon reflects this aspect. Third, to reach Gang Rou Xiang Ji in Bagua, the practitioner should separate a unified movement into small motions and apply gang and row to each of them. Fourth, an important principle of gang row in Bagua is Jin Chu Gang Zai Zhang, Jin Shou Gang Zai Shen. When you send the energy outward, the gang power is in the hand. When you retrieve the energy inward, the gang power is concentrated in the body. Fifth, some people believe that in Bagua circle walking practice, the hand and the foot should begin and conclude movement simultaneously. Remember, this is a misperception. Actually, the energies generated by the hand and the foot movements should be in unison. That concludes today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions either in the comments or in the Ask Dao Yi channel for the Dao Yi Discord or by email if you prefer to remain anonymous. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.